a quick explanation of Pythagoras' theorem. So Pythagoras' theorem applies to right angled triangles. So here is your right angle, as in 90 degrees. And um, Pythagoras allows us to perform some really simple calculations. If we know two sides of a triangle, then we can use Pythagoras to calculate the third side. And it doesn't matter which one we're calculating. I'll take you through examples of that in a couple of moments. So first of all, let's label up this triangle. Um, I'm going to call this A, B and C. The longest side of a right angle triangle is called the hypotenuse. But I'm not going to worry about the technical names at the moment. So what Pythagoras said was that a squared equals b squared plus c squared. So you'll sometimes see this written as the square on the hypotenuse. So that square is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So b squared plus c squared. So we tend to take this and we change it. So we just find a, we can find the length of the hypotenuse. So a equals the square root of b squared plus c squared. So that is an important formula and I've highlighted that on your handout. Um, next step, let's do a couple of examples. And again, I'll follow the examples which are on your handout. So, example one. Uh, I've given you a simple triangle and I've not drawn it to scale, but you have some uh, simple numbers to work with. I said this side is 15 meters, this side is 25 meters. Find this side A. So nice and simple, take the formula. A equals the square root of 15 squared plus 25 squared. And if you put this into your calculator, hopefully you'll come out with 29.1. And usually we would have a unit, for example, this could be in meters. Oops. And therefore your answer is in meters. Just to a quick point, at this stage, the hypotenuse must be longer than any of the other two sides. So got that bit right. So uh, let's do example two. So example two, um, I've sketched out a triangle not to scale and I've given you some numbers to deal with. I've used particular letters on this occasion. I've called this R, X and Z. I've done that deliberately. These letters and the formula we'll write to correspond to that become very important in the following weeks. So X, Z and R, resistance, reactance and impedance. I've given you some numbers. 250 for R, 170 for X. And these units are in ohms. And I've asked you define z. So z equals the square root of, and it's the two shorter sides, each squared and added. Square root of the lot. Put your numbers in. Square root of 250 squared plus 170 squared. And it's the square root of the whole lot. Come back to that in a moment. And if you work that out, put it in your calculator, we'll come up with something around 302. That is ohms. 
Okay, if you make mistakes with your calculator, the most common problem occurs in just taking the square root of the first bit. So you end up with a square root of 250 squared and add on the second number. This is a calculator error. You need to be careful entering your details in there. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's have a look at the final example and I'm just going to change things very slightly. So in the question I've given you, I've actually given Z as 200. I've given you R as 180. And on this occasion, you have to find X. So the formula just changes very slightly. X is what we want to find. And it's the square root of the longest one, Z squared minus the smaller one, R squared. Put the numbers in, the square root of 200 squared minus 180 squared. And hopefully you'll come out with something around about 187. And that's in ohms. So just to summarize that bit, this is really important. If we're finding the longest side, the hypotenuse, a plus goes in that formula. If we are finding one of the shorter sides, either of these two, and you're given the longest side, then a minus goes into the formula and you must start with the bigger number. If you do these the other way around, you'll get a syntax error on your calculator because technically you can't have the square root of a negative number. OK, so I hope that lot makes sense. If you now look at the next page of your handout, you can make a start on the questions that I've left you to do. Good luck with that.